Russell's Chipotle Kitchen. Um, today, I have a pie that you all are going to absolutely love. It's no bake, it's so easy, it's so delicious. And if you grew up in the 60s or 70s, you probably remember it. I'm talking about Millionaire Pie. It's pink, pretty, creamy, pineapple, cherry, pecan, coconut. It's everything right here in one bite. Delicious. It goes on a graham cracker crust, or I've used um, vanilla wafers or just other kinds of crumb crusts for it. But it, it goes together in about five minutes. You put it in the fridge overnight and it's ready to go the next day. So y'all head over to the kitchen and I'm gonna sit right here with my pie. Okay, y'all, these are the ingredients for our millionaire pie. We need the sweetened condensed milk, not evaporated milk. Make sure that it says sweetened condensed milk. That's the really thick, sweet milk that you're gonna want for this pie. We have pecans, lemon juice, crushed pineapple, maraschino cherries, coconut, and Cool Whip. And I also have a recipe for um, kind of a copycat Cool Whip on the blog if you would prefer to use something all natural. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't really see a difference in this pie one way or another. And then the other thing you're gonna need is a crumb crust. Sometimes I use uh, vanilla wafers, sometimes I use uh, sandwich cookies. This time I just used a plain old graham cracker crust. So, And um, you want this crust to be well chilled. So I'm gonna put this back in the freezer and then we'll get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop a half a cup of pecans. And um, I like to toast them after they're chopped. I think it gives them a little more crunch and a little more flavor. But you can skip that step if you want. That's not a problem. Just if you do toast them, make sure that you bring them back to room temperature before you add them to the pie or your pie is going to melt. In fact, um, chill them a little bit so that you're sure that they're nice and cool. You don't have to chop these up tiny. They, you know, you don't want them like this big, but they don't have to be microscopic either. Just a nice chop. All right, they're all nice and chopped. They're uh, uniform in size, they're kind of small. I'm gonna take these and put them on a baking sheet that I've drizzled with oil. And then I'm gonna put them in a 375 degree oven for five to 10 minutes and um, just until they're toasted. You'll be able to smell them and you wanna watch them really carefully because they'll go toast from toasted to burnt really, really fast. All right, our pecans are really good and toasted and they've cooled to um, kind of a chilled room temperature. I've kept them in the, I, I uh, let them come to room temperature and then I put them in the refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes just to put a little bit of chill on them. All right, this is our pineapple. You want crushed pineapple, not chunks, not um, rings, but just the crushed pineapple. And you want to drain it really well and reserve the juice. So I'm just going to push it down in the can and uh, drain it and get as much of that juice off as I can. If you have time, it's really good to just kind of put a colander over a bowl and let it drain for, you know, maybe 20 minutes or so just to get as much of the liquid out of it as you can. The reason is the more liquid that's in your pineapple, the more um, watery your pie is going to tend to be. So you want this pineapple to be just as dry as possible. So I got about a cup and a half of juice out of that can of pine pineapple. And as you can see, this pineapple is still moist, but it's, uh, it's also, pretty well wrung out, it's pretty dry. You've got the pineapple meat, 
but you um, don't have all of the juice that's gonna make your pie get uh, too wet. So we're gonna set that aside. The next thing that we want is a cup of maraschino cherries, and we wanna drain those, but again, you're gonna um, reserve the juice, and then you want to chop them. I suggest that if you care about your cutting board at all, um, that you chop them on top of a piece of wax paper or something because this color will stain your cutting board. This is my favorite cutting board, but I don't, as you can see, I don't worry too much about burning it, staining it, or anything else. Um, this is just the one that I use for everything but me. And you want the cherries to get chopped up, um, not too finely, but I don't like them where it's just halves either. I like them to be relatively, chopped relatively small. Once I have the cherries chopped up, as you can see, there's still a lot of juice in here. I'm just gonna press them with a paper towel and get any extra juice off of them that I can. Again, we don't want this pie to be watery. And if you make this and it doesn't set up right, more than likely you're not getting enough of the um, juice off of your fruit. All right, so in our bowl, we're going to add the pineapple that we've drained and pressed out the juice from. We're gonna add the maraschino cherries that we've drained and pressed out the juice from. And we're gonna add our pecans that we've toasted and cooled. Stir that up. And you want that to get mixed up well. You don't want there to be clumps of um, pineapple or clumps of cherry. You want it to be pretty evenly mixed. Next, we're gonna put in one cup of sweetened flaked coconut, not toasted. I tried it one time toasting the coconut and then putting it in there, and what ended up happening is I had little brown flecks in my pie that were not pretty at all, so I don't recommend toasting the coconut. Stir that up again. Now we're going to add the sweetened condensed milk, the lemon juice, and the pineapple juice. So here's the sweetened condensed milk, very thick. And you want to run a, a spoon or a spatula around the inside of the can to get it all out because it sticks. You still have a lot in that can. I'm going to add my five tablespoons of lemon juice, which this will help it set up. One, two, three, four, whoo, just barely, five. All right. And one tablespoon of the pineapple juice that we reserved from the can. Now, you could also add um, a little cherry juice in here if you wanted to make it really pink. A lot of people do that and I've done it before, uh, but you don't have to. So, and I think this is gonna be plenty pink. much what you're gonna see at this point. It looks kind of like a big mess, but a big delicious mess. So now we're gonna fold in one and a half cups of Cool Whip or the copycat Cool Whip on the blog. I always um, make it a very generous one and a half cups of Cool Whip and I put it in there in two separate batches. So I'm gonna take about half of it and I'm going to fold that in with my rubber spatula. 
And remember, folding is just an under and over movement, a gentle under and over movement. Under and over. What it does when you put half of it in is it helps to lighten it up and then the other half goes in better and stays fluffier. If you put it in there all at once, you're gonna lose some of the whipped aspect of it and some of the air in it. So if you do it this way, it takes a minute longer, but um, just you get a better result. And now we're gonna fold the rest of it in. until all of the uh, whip topping is folded in and you're not getting a lot of um, streaks of thick white whipped topping, like right there. But at the same time, you don't want to do it so much that you completely lose your, the texture of it either. So just enough, but not too much. And if it does have a little streak of whip topping in there, that's not gonna hurt anybody. There we go. So now it's ready for the crust. All right, we've got our chilled crust and we're just gonna spoon this in here and smooth it in. and try to kind of pile it up towards, you know, flatten it out so it goes all the way to the edges. But then with the rest of it, pile it up towards the middle. This pie is fabulous for all kinds of summer parties because it's no bake and um, you can serve it frozen. You can freeze it, you can make it ahead and freeze it. You can serve it frozen. I'd take it out of the freezer about 15 to 20 minutes before you want to serve it. And you definitely have to keep it cold. If you put it out on a picnic table on a 110 degree day, you've got about five minutes before that baby starts melting. But still, if you're going to be able to keep it cool, this is perfect because it's make ahead, it's pretty, and everybody loves it. All right, once you've got it mounted up like that, you're gonna to wanna to cover it and let it chill overnight in the refrigerator. Now, I'm just gonna give you a little tip. Um, I hate covering cream pies because the plastic wrap invariably gets stuck and half the, well, not half, but a layer of the cream comes off on the plastic wrap. If you'll just spray it down with a little cooking or baking release spray or oil it with some butter or oil, whatever. But if you're gonna do oil, make sure it's not like garlic oil or something, make sure it's a light oil. Then when you put it on, it's not gonna to stick to the pie itself. If you get too much on there, like obviously I just did, it may not stick to anything, but let's see. So I'm gonna put this on. And when I take it off, see, it's gonna come right off without any problems. So I'm gonna put this on here like this, and then I'm gonna just cover it with the regular unsprayed plastic wrap, just to make sure it's good and covered and make sure that the cover sticks to the glass because the oiled cover won't. So there's our pie, it's ready for the refrigerator, and um, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Okay, y'all, the um, pie has chilled overnight, and so it's ready to be finished. And if you'll remember, I sprayed the um, plastic wrap with spray so that nothing would stick to it, and it didn't, so that's great. My The top of my pie looks pretty good. I'm just going to uh, even it up a little bit. And then, 
on goes the topping. So there's a lot of ways to do this. Some people like to put it in little dots so that the pie filling shows through. I'll tell you what I like to do, and that is I like to cover up the whole entire thing. Because you know, go big or go home, right? So we'll see. A lot, a lot of times I'll do this with just um, my uh, Cool Whip Copycat, which is basically a stabilized whipped cream. But this time I'm just gonna use a Cool Whip. My kids are gonna be sorry and sad because I used all of it, but that's okay. They like to, I don't know, did you ever eat Cool Whip like out of the freezer when you were a kid? I sure did, and my kids, we don't have it around here very often, so they consider it a treat. A little crazy. Now, um, you can garnish it any way you want. I'm going to put some drained uh, maraschino cherries on there that I've dried off a little bit with a towel and I'm going to try to get them on there as evenly as possible. I've got eight of them so we'll see. That's not going to go even is it? Huh? We'll see. I don't know how good I am at this. I am not good at fractions and math and all that other stuff but it looks pretty even. And then you can even put some nuts, chopped nuts or some coconut on the top and that looks real pretty too. So there it is. There is our beautiful pie. And now it's time to take it over to the table and cut it and see what we've got. Hey y'all, what did you think about that pie, right? Easy, so easy. And the thing about it is, is you can freeze it. So you can make several of them for the summer, keep them in your freezer until you need to use them, bring them out, thaw them for about 15 to 30 minutes before you're planning on serving it. And it's right there, all done for you. You gotta love that, right? There's nothing more Southern than pie and coffee. And being able to sit down in the afternoon and enjoy a piece of pie and a cup of coffee, now that's heaven. So let's see how this pie tastes. And you know it's gonna be good. It's got pineapple and Cool Whip in it, right? It's cold and creamy. It's so good. The pineapple is bright and fruity and the cherries just pop. It's delicious. I hope y'all are gonna try this. I will give you one tip though. Before you go to cut your pie for serving, make sure that you do freeze it for at least 15 minutes just for it to firm up so that you get a really pretty piece unlike my piece because I was in a hurry. So freeze that pie before you cut it. Your friends and your relatives, your family, Everybody's gonna love it. You are going to be the belle of the barbecue. And um, I hope that you'll remember to subscribe and you'll check out Restless Chipotle blog. And I'll see you next time, okay? All right, I'm gonna sit here and enjoy this and y'all go on and get this stuff and make it. Talk to you later. Love you. bye-bye.